with that being said, I like to call to order the December 19th, 2022 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting for the city of Palm Springs. So with that, I'd like to ask for a roll call, please. Okay, when I, uh, when I call your name, please indicate if you are present. Chair Alcorn. Present. Commissioner Cola Donato. Present. Commissioner Crawford. I'm here. Perfect, thank you. Commissioner Diaz. Circle back to Commissioner Diaz. Commissioner Finland. Present. Commissioner Meyer. I'm present. Commissioner Moralia. Present. And Commissioner Spellman. Okay. We have, okay, we have all members present uh, with Commissioner Diaz, who will be joining us momentarily. She's just having an issue with the Zoom link and Commissioner Spellman excused. All right. With that being said, thank you very much for doing that, ma'am. I'd like to do a report of the posting of the agenda, please. Having just a little bit of some technology issues over here advancing. No oh. problem. Okay, so uh, the agenda was posted last week on Wednesday, December uh, 14th, uh, in accordance with our public meeting posting requirements. Thank you very much. All right, so has everybody had a chance to look at our minutes that were sent out from October's meeting since we did have, uh, we went black in November. Everybody have a chance to look at October's minutes. Is there any amendments? If no amendments or uh, any changes, I'd like to have uh, approval of the minutes. Motion. Thank you, Michael. Can I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Moralia. And then I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Chair Alcorn? Yes. Commissioner Cola Donato? Yes. Commissioner Crawford? Commissioner Crawford? I believe I was absent, so I abstain. Um, I think with our um, review of the minutes, what the city typically does is because our meetings are recorded, that commissioners are welcome to watch the recorded meeting and then that way compare it to the minutes. But we'll note on this one that you were uh, absent. Let's see, Commissioner Finland? Yes. Commissioner Meyer? Yes. Commissioner Moralia? Yes. Let's see if we have Commissioner Diaz yet. Okay. Uh, motion carries uh, with our commissioners who've noted their absences as um, Commissioner Crawford uh, and Commissioner Diaz will be attending late and Commissioner Spellman excused. Awesome, thank you very much, ma'am. At this time, I'd like to move forward to public comment. This section is gonna be open for the public to have comments. This is not a banter back and forth between the commission and, and public. This is just for your comments at this section. Uh, we do appreciate it. There is a two minute limit per person three minute limit per person. Sorry, let me correct. Um, so at this point of time, I'd like to open the meeting up for our public comments. Who do we have first in the line, please? Okay, so if you are a member of the public and you are in the waiting room and you would like to speak right now, uh, please use the raise hand feature or please indicate in the chat bar so we can let you into the meeting.
Okay, we're just checking so far. Uh, no one has raised their hand. So again, if you are uh, attending the meeting and you are interested in speaking right now during public comment, if you could just please use the raise hand uh, feature or in the chat bar indicate that you would like to speak. If you're unaware, if you go to the top bar, there's three dots, you press more. On the very bottom, it says raise hand. If no comments, we'll proceed forward. Okay, it looks like we do not have any public comments. Okay. Well, with that being said, we're gonna close upon public comment section and we're gonna move forward to the director's report. Yvonne, will you please give us a report? Hey, uh, I'm still having a little bit of issues over here advancing the slides. Uh, so I apologize if they are moving or not moving at the right speed. Um, but like at uh, our previous meetings, uh, what I wanna do with this agenda item is to give you some updates on the status of the projects and programs and activities that we have been working on since our last Parks and Rec Commission meeting on October 24th. Um, we are still working on our landscaping in all of our parks, and that is really a three-pronged approach, which includes overseeding of grass, uh, determining those areas for dormant grass, as well as landscape conversions, which we will be talking about later on today's agenda. Uh, this here graphic, you've seen this before, this is the status of the overseeding for all of our parks. So as you can see, the majority of our parks are already completed and they are reopened. Uh, right now, we are wrapping up Desert Highland, which will open up on December 21st, so that's this Wednesday, and then Ruth Hardy will open up uh, back on December 24th. And by open up, I mean those areas um, that are currently being overseeded. The park, of course, um, areas are open. Wonderful. So shifting gears, I wanna talk a little bit about um, some of the special events that we've been working on. So the fall and the winter are a really busy time for parks and recreation for a variety of special events that we produce or that we help um, coordinate and support. So on Monday, October 31st, we had our amazing annual Halloween carnival at the James O. Jesse Center. It was a three hour fun filled event with uh, games, a haunted house, and uh, plenty of treats for everyone. Great job on that, by the way, JOJ. Yeah, thank you for that. I'll make sure that everyone uh, gets that, kudos. The next day on Tuesday, November 1st, we did our Dia de los Muertos event. Uh, at the DeMuth Community Center. And this was an amazing three hour event. Uh, there was food, mariachi performances, uh, loteria. We had um, amazing community altars as well as arts and crafts activities. Just a few days later on November 6th, uh, the Parks and Rec team helped support the 36th annual Palm Springs Pride Parade. It was a two hour parade. There were over a hundred entries uh, and the attendance at this year's Pride Parade was estimated to be close to uh, 60,000 people. Good job. Mm -hmm. And just a few days later, our department uh, organized and produced the annual Veterans Day Parade. So on Friday, November 11th at 3.30, the parade kicked off. It was uh, live broadcasted on NBC Palm Springs uh, and completed with a concert and fireworks. And for the uh, Veterans Day Parade, the attendance was estimated to be 20,000 people came down to see that. In December, we uh, kicked off the month with our annual tree lighting ceremony at Francis Stevens Park. Um, as you can see in the picture, uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus were in um, you know, their fine garb and made a wonderful appearance, helping us light up the tree. And there was also cookies and cocoa and crafts and uh, caroling for the community to join in. Uh, the next day, our department uh, produced and supported the 30th Annual Festival of Lights Parade, 
on December 3rd. Uh, it was a two hour parade, which was also um, live broadcast on NBC Palm Springs. And the attendance for this year's Festival of Lights uh, parade was estimated to be close to 80,000 attendees came down and lined the streets to join in on the holiday fun. Mm -hmm. Very fun event too. On uh, December 9th through 11th, we hosted a the Southern California Swimming Winter Age Group Championship Swim Meet at the Swim Center. So it was a three-day event. Uh, 1,500 attendees were estimated to have joined and to have um, competed in our amazing pool. So this was um, a really great event to sort of showcase our facility as a great location for swim meets. Uh, the weather was a little bit rainy, but you can see that, you know, we did get a rainbow. So um, that made up for that one rainy day. <laughs> it was fun and beautiful. That uh, same evening, Friday, December 9th, we had a community performance at uh, the James O. Jesse Center featuring our drill team and drum squad. And this was also part of our crew come ride with us event. Uh, just last week on Thursday, December 5th, uh, the city held the ribbon cutting for the new restroom facilities at uh, James O. Jesse. Uh, and as you can see in the picture, uh, we had Chair Alcorn representing our Parks and Rec Commission uh, and speaking at the event. And then I have just a couple photos to show you of the actual ribbon cutting. Uh, you can see obviously Mayor Middleton uh, and Mayor Pro Tem Grace Garner. And then our very own uh, staff member, uh, Jarvis Crawford, and our facility manager um, getting interviewed as well. And then just a couple more photos of our restroom facility. Uh, the next day on uh, December 16th, uh, we had our annual Christmas program at the James O. Jesse Center. So this was a two hour event. It featured um, a lot of giveaways, gingerbread house making, uh, toys and performances, and of course, photos with Santa as well. This was a really fun filled event. Um, the gymnasium was packed as you can see in the pictures here. <laughs> the next morning, uh, we had a similar event uh, at our pavilion, uh, Breakfast with Santa from 8 to 11, a three hour event featuring pancakes, games, crafts, and uh, photos with Santa and more. And just a couple photos from that event. You can see uh, Commissioner Diaz taking our sleigh out for a ride. <laughs> And, um, you know, thanks to really generous donations, uh, we were able to do an amazing sort of toy giveaway that every uh, child who came was able to select um, their favorite toy. And there on the left, you'll see Chair Alcorn hanging out with the Grinch. <laughs> anyway, one of the most fun events that our department gets to produce. Uh, that same day, we had our community flea market at the Duluth Community Center. Um, so that was on just this past weekend on Saturday, December 17th. Uh, and right now, this is a newer market for us. Um, and our frequency right now is doing this one every third Saturday of the month. So coming up, um, or actually just starting today, we have our two uh, winter camps that have just started. So for James O. Jesse, we will have three uh, one week sessions for winter camp with arts, crafts, games, field trips, and more. Uh, and those camp winter camp sessions run from nine to two. And then similar program right over um, at our leisure center, we have three weeks of winter camp sessions um, running from nine to three. And again, arts, crafts, games, field trips, and more. And these are highly popular um, for our community. So shifting gears, we can talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, improvements that we've made uh, in our parks and facilities. 
Uh, for our swim center, we did a scoreboard upgrade. So as you can see in that photo on the left, uh, the Lexan panels that were on the existing scoreboard at the swim center were in dire need of being replaced. Uh, many of them, or actually all of them, were really cracked and damaged. So what we did, and I'll show you one more picture. So here is what the old scoreboard looked like. And as you can see on that bottom panel, there used to be a city seal on there, as well as the um, name of the Palm Springs Swim Center. All of that um, from being outside for probably 12 years or so, I believe, had just sort of um, weathered in the hot sun. So what we did is we purchased new Lexan panels for the entire scoreboard to give it a spruced up appearance. And we created a new graphic for the bottom um, that says Palm Springs Swim Center, as well as the address and phone number and new email address that we're using uh, for the public to get in touch with us with any uh, inquiries that they have about the swim center. And one more, this is just another glamour shot. So you can see how the scoreboard looks at the site. So it really looks amazing now with just a little upkeep on our um, staff's part. And this was actually done uh, in time for the big swim meet as well. Also at the swim center, we installed uh, a new ADA step system uh, with a new eight ladder system. So that's a picture of that and looks great and works great for our community. Um, over the summer, I reported on us receiving the grant from the Anderson Children's Foundation, uh, $38,764 for us to procure 10 new starting blocks. We received those starting blocks um, early in December and we're able to get those installed also in time for the new swim meet. So there is just a image on the left side of your screen with the new starting blocks. So the swim center is uh, really starting to look nice. Over at Demuth, our new LED lighting system um, project is still moving forward. And this is the project to convert those old metal halide lights into LED fixtures. This is a Measure J funded project. Uh, in terms of next steps on this one, the plans and specs will go out for bid and target date for completion would be end of year of 2023. So about one year from now, um, this project should be crossing the finish line. <coughs> Hey, Yvonne. Uh huh. So, is that is is that for all the uh, fields? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Um, also, over at Demuth, um, we had talked a bit about the new um, HVAC upgrade for the gymnasium that had been a little bit delayed. Uh, that is again um, moving forward, and we should have that project completed early in 2023. So I've sort of uh, have estimated the first quarter of 2023 for that. And this will be the first time that our gymnasium at Demuth has um, actual an air conditioning system. It previously had an old swamp cooler system. So much needed for our community during our hot uh, springs and summers. So again, almost finished. Um, we are operating the James O. Jesse Center and uh, DeMuth, that should say community center, not park, um, as a cooling center. So both of those facilities are open Monday through Friday with JOJ being open um, from nine to 5.30 and DeMuth Community Center being open from nine to six. Um, right now, a lot of the community is not using this, but the space is available as the um, you know, days have been a little bit cooler. Uh, folks can come in, have some cocoa and just get warm. At one of our last meetings, we had talked about additional ways that we are trying to um, ensure that the public has easy access to know what we're doing and to stay in the loop on a lot of the projects that Parks and Rec does. So we still have that new section on our website. Uh, if you go to the Parks and Recreation webpage, on the left-hand side, you will see a uh, link that says Project Updates. So we are keeping that up to date with a lot of these great things that we're working on. And we'll continue to monitor that to see if that's a good way for us to be communicating with the public. We have a survey out right now uh, for the swim center. We are conducting a survey on the reservation system that we are using, that we're currently using right now for swim lanes. So the survey is available on the swim center page on the city's website. 
uh, the deadline for um, people to provide any input in the reservation system is Sunday, January 15th. Uh, I believe it's at noon, I think, when the survey closes. So again, we're just collecting feedback on how the reservation system is working. And we'll continue to do other surveys um, on other areas uh, around our parks and facilities to get that input that we need. I think I am almost finished. Uh, so last up, we are still hiring over for the, at the Parks and Recreation Department. So we have eight recruitments that are in various stages of um, progress. We are still recruiting for a program coordinator. We're recruiting for two lifeguard positions, one full-time and one part-time. We're recruiting for our account clerk too. And then we are recruiting for four uh, part-time park rangers. So if you know anyone who's interested in working for the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, please send them over to the city's website where they can get information on any of those recruitments um, that are open as well as many more. Because uh, right now our department is still running with a pretty significant uh, vacancy. So we will have those additional uh, recruitments up as soon as we are able. And that I believe concludes, um, yes, it does conclude all of the slides uh, and updates that I wanted to give you today. Thank you, Yvonne, awesome report. I really appreciate it. I'll leave my comments to when we have the open section, but I'm really happy with all the stuff we got going on. This is an awesome mm -hmm. time of the year. So with that being done, it looks like we have a presentation items. Do we have the presentation for the landscape conversion from Conserve? Are they in house? Uh, let me see if we have Conserve here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Tabby, I've just brought you over. Um, Let's see, I don't see Brent. Is anyone else from Conserve joining us tonight, Tabby? No, it was just Brent. Let me text him and see if he's had, had any issues. Okay. No And <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> man, I've been going nonstop, brother. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> Trust me, I see you out there, Jerry. <laughs> gotta make stuff happen. You gotta make stuff happen. That's right, babe. Hey, good job on showing up to everything, too. Very, very cool. That's my job. I'm the face. No are we still are you just chit chatting or are we still meeting yeah, we're still we're still meeting we're just holding for conserve gotcha. I, And if we, uh, if we don't have a uh, conserve tonight, what I will do is I will just sort of uh, flip through the yeah, rendering. We can walk through the updates. I think I have a. Okay. All right, so I am gonna start flipping through. Thank you, ladies. Okay, so this uh, graphic here was again to just uh, orient you guys on what we were doing again. So we've got um, one, two, three, four, five. We've got our five parks um, that we were working on the conceptual renderings to convert areas into drought tolerant landscaping. Uh, you have seen in previous meetings, you've seen um, preliminary concepts for four of the parks. We also have Ruth Hardy to show you tonight as well. All together with these five parks, we're looking at Call about from your phone. 10 acres. Uh, being converted into drought tolerant landscaping. Tell her to call from her phone. 
fuck we want the police to come over here for? Let's mute. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for Bristow Park, is everyone still with me, I think? Yeah. Okay, so we've got Bristow Park, we've got uh, 0.6 acres of turf, of which 0.2 uh, has been slated for conversion. Uh, and as hopefully you can see on your screen here, we've got the two areas identified. Uh, with this being area one, uh, adjacent to the base, uh, the basketball court. And then the plantings that were selected. And then area two. And again, the selected plantings. Looks good. I'll keep moving. This is not uh, an action item tonight, so just any feedback on these. And then uh, once we have um, all of your feedback, we'll bring it forward as an action item. So Desert Highland Park, uh, 10 acres, uh, of which 7.51 is turf, of which 2.15 has been slated for conversion. Uh, and as you can see on the lower right of your screen there in red, um, Desert Highland Park has been, just for purposes of figuring out the landscaping conversions, has been um, sort of separated into eight different sections. And this is the planting map. And the goal with the, there we go, the goal with the uh, landscaping conversions for Desert Highland was to be able to sort of create a walking path around the perimeter of the park. I'm just gonna keep scanning through these. Okay. Okay, next up, uh, Francis Stevens Park, uh, four acres total, 1.4 is turf of which 0.4 acres have been slated for conversion. Uh, and as you can see in the lower right of your screen there, uh, Francis Stevens has been divided into six uh, different planting areas. And this is of course the plant legend again, sort of flip through these renderings. Area one, uh, area two, Three, that's four. Uh, five. Six. Okay, next up we have Ruth Hardy. Uh, so this is the first time that you would be looking at the conceptual renderings from Conserve on Ruth Hardy Park. Uh, and Ruth Hardy, of course, is uh, it's a large park, 22 acres. 13.95 uh, is turf, of which uh, 4.68 have been slated for conversion areas. Uh, and this is the plant legend for Ruth Hardy. And based on the feedback that you've given in previous uh, meetings, Conserve has tried to incorporate that. Uh, methodology into the proposal for Ruth Hardy. Uh, Ruth Hardy has been divided into six sections. Uh, e and F are on the right side of your screen, which you may not be able to see in this rendering real clearly. Uh, this is section A, which is the basketball court section. We did receive a uh, written public comment that was forwarded to you about uh, ensuring that areas around the basketball court um, remain um, in drought tolerant landscaping so that unnecessary water doesn't um, go onto the courts. So that is feedback that we can forward to conserve um, if you'd like us to. And then continuing to move around, section B. Yep. 
in section D, uh, up near the volleyball courts, you see. Section E. And F. Okay, uh, and then our last park, so Victoria Park, eight acres, uh, 6.92 is turf, of which 2.71 uh, were slated for conversion. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, Conserve has divided uh, Victoria Park into 11 areas for uh, planting. And based on the feedback from the previous meetings, uh, they worked to ensure that there could be a walking path around the park. And this is, of course, the plant legend. I'll we'll just flip through the 11 areas, starting with one. You can see the legend uh, in the lower right shows you where one is, sort of on the school side. And then working down, two and three. Uh, area four at the corner. Five in the rendering, I think you can see sort of the walking path there. Area six, and then moving up, seven, eight, nine, and then going back around on the school side, area 10. and 11. Um, in terms of timeline for this, uh, we obviously are in the phase right now where we are presenting the conceptual renderings to the commission to get feedback from the commission, uh, as well as provide an opportunity for the public to provide feedback on the plans. We're envisioning potentially that we would take uh, an item to council in February for action, but that will be dependent on um, how fast we we're able to get the updated concepts to the Parks and Rec Commission for action uh, at a future meeting. So again, today's uh, presentation is really just to sort of show you uh, where Conserve is at in the conceptual um, development process for those landscape conversions. Can I ask a any... quick question? Mm -hmm. So other than Ruth Hardy, which we've seen all the other um, plans before, did they already change out all of the plants that we said were problematic and all of that stuff? So basically, other than Ruth Hardy, are the other ones all ready to go, essentially? Yeah, yeah. We think the other ones um, are ready to go and that they've already incorporated all of your feedback from previous meetings. You know, if there's new feedback, we will give that to them. Um, otherwise, they'll just continue sort of, you know, moving forward um, on any revisions to Ruth Hardy and then starting their process of um, figuring out the costs associated with the conversions as envisioned. Gotcha. So how do we how do we do that? Can we move forward with all but Ruth Hardy or can we do we need to do it all at once? Uh, we'd like to do it all at once. So tonight, uh, no action from you, just any other feedback that you may have. And then what we'll do is at the next Parks and Rec Commission meeting, or as soon as we think that it's ready, we'll bring forward the full package as an action item, and then we'll take it to council all together as one item as well. Gotcha. Thanks. Awesome. And let me just check with Tabby. Tabby, did I miss anything uh, that you would have mentioned during the walkthrough? Um, no, I just wanted to point out for Ruth Hardy, just because those ones are a lot <clears throat> darker, I guess I just wanted to point out the um, stepping stone walk paths from the on-site parking directly to the park. Yeah, we, when we get to the report, I was going to give a good little report on all this for everybody so they really understand what we've been doing on it. There's been a lot of um, thought put into it, guys. Yeah, the only other point is all the plantings that we included, we've now double checked and referenced them against the um, Coachella Valley Lush and Green um, planting for Desertscape. 
make sure it's in compliance with that as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so that uh, then that is the end of this presentation item, or at least from staff. Awesome, thank you very much. Can I, can I real quick? Uh, Tabby, are you still here, Tabby? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, um, is this is a side note of, of this, but it does pertain to conserve and the grass. Um, on the ball fields, is there a way we can figure out how to get rid of these gophers? It, it's, it's bad. Someone, someone's going to get hurt out there. Um, I've been playing out there for years, and it's always been a problem, but it just seems like it's infesting more. So I don't know if that's on the conserve side, but all it's, the... It's kind of a joint effort um, because we only have so much, I guess, um, pest control provisions in their contract. It kind of falls back more on our citywide pest control services contract. So we have been working with both Lloyd's pest control and conserve because we do see that the issue has kind of ramped up in this last year and conserve did bring it to our attention. So we're working with the pest control company to try and see what avenues we can pursue to be a little bit more aggressive. So that, we're trying to ramp up the frequency of their on-site, I guess, um, just removal tactics and trying to incorporate that into the pest control services contract by amending it. Okay. Because it, it we're starting to ramp up now and, and the weather's perfect. The fields are in great shape, except those outfields, uh, fields five, field six, and field seven and eight are bad. And I know even the little league fields are bad. But we're going to start playing on these things a lot now. And I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. And that's the first thing everybody says is, hey, there's just too many gopher holes. So I, I got to put it on record that there's something we can do. I mean, these are rodents. These are pests. These are causing problems. You know, I just want to state it for the record. I'll that's check back in with the facilities department and see where they're at with that progress. Okay. I know it's a little off of our new little landscape here, but it's the only chance I had to talk to somebody from Conserve, so I, I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Tabby. Okay. Awesome. Uh, With that, that being... a... Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Back to you. With that being said, and the uh, presentation being led, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, we're on to ad hoc commissioner updates. So at this time, our ad hoc updates, do we have anything from the dog park ad hoc committee? We do. Awesome. <laughs> I'd like to hear it, sir. Um, we met about two weeks ago, I want to say, and the purpose of that meeting was really to get the Duluth Park preliminary um, items in motion. And those include things like, as you can see, more um, poop collection stations, I guess. I don't know what you want to call those. Um, signage for the rules. The ground cover clearly needs to be updated from what it currently is and it looks like dg is where we would go um a shade structure kind of in the center but that's sort of a next tier issue because i forget what the lead time is yvonne but it's a few months right mm -hmm. yeah almost six months. um and then a windscreen for sort of the back area you know where the um not tumbleweeds what the heck are they called goat heads yeah oh, thank go you um <laughs> <laughs> where that area is so that you kind of eliminate that um, because our thought was what we want to do is make the Demuth Park dog park at least make it a place where you want to go whereas right now it doesn't feel that way you know so we, we need to make it feel like a place you want to go and then once these preliminary things are done we can go the next step to get a little more community involvement and everything else. But this sort of spends the Measure J funds, right? So that's where we're at. 
Awesome. So you guys are looking to do shade structure, some new ground covering. I appreciate it. I like taking my dogs to Demuth when I can. I got all bigger dogs, so I really do appreciate it, John. Thank you. I hey, love John. taking mine to Demuth as well, but I usually don't go into the dog park because of the state of it right now. I just kind of walk around the park. Hey, yes, John, did we, uh, did we get the grading part done too? That's part of it too, before the DG goes down. Awesome. Any uh, question? Any other questions for John or the dog park subcommittee? Yeah, yeah one more real quick from me. Uh, yes. John, didn't we talk about, and I, I know I talked to Janice and maybe Yvonne about this, but um, I was at the Toys for Tots tournament and uh, some of my teammates, uh, we were hitting the ball into that park real easy mm -hmm. on seven. And so that net, uh, we've hit the top of the uh, CB link where the, where the panels are, that was hit multiple times. So I don't know if those panels are going to be able to handle softballs hitting them, but a fence is definitely going to be something, uh, netting uh, is something that we're going to definitely have to look into. No, you're right. We did, we did um, talk about that. I just okay. don't know if that's phase one or phase two. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Maybe we can talk to Seabag about that because that's a might have been an oversight after yep. putting that. Nobody mm -hmm. thought. So awesome. All right, with that being said, let's move on to the next section, which would be the landscape conversion committee. Michael, do you want to go on this one, sir? Jerry, I'm going to actually be speaking on pickleball, and I can't talk on landscape at this moment. So if I may no defer problem. to you. I'll take care of it. Thank so you. So yeah, you guys heard, we've been working with Conserve on the landscape conversions, both Michael, I, and Yvonne. Uh, it's been a long process. Um, if you see also what I've been pushing pretty hard for years now, is trying to get walking paths into our park. And with this landscape conversion, we're able to accomplish that, which is really a good task. As well as in the landscape conversion, if you see where we're going around the perimeters, we're also making cut over paths so people aren't directly walking onto our landscape. They are actually have designated paths to go from the sidewalk through the landscape into the park. Um, on top of that as well, we're also working pretty hard with the uh, conserve on making sure we have proper planting in there, not only that's drought tolerant, but also uh, not so disinuous. So we're going to have to spend more money in the long run as far as for maintenance, upkeep. There's not going to be uh, many plantings that have a lot of spikes or would hurt or injure somebody. So we really have gone through and tried to make a uh, pretty good progress on this and do a lot of thought and forethought for this also in the uh, victoria park if you see along the, the back edge where the, the the school is very beautiful school we make sure to keep it open and inviting for all the kids and the families as well to also see our park so you know the landscape conversion i'm really happy with i'm really proud of how we're doing and it's coming along very well um of course, next step, I'm trying to get some exercise equipment in and around some of these places, but I love how the landscape conversion is going on and it's doing, it seems like it's uh, heading in the right direction. Once we get Ruth Hardy uh, dialed in and nailed, I think we're going to be taking it for an action item and we'll be submitting it to council here shortly. So we've had multiple meetings every month, really working on this, taking a lot of time to talk. And yeah, I'm just very happy with this landscape conversion and that's pretty much my presentation for that. Does anybody have any questions or anything for it? Awesome. So with that, I'm gonna move on to our master plan subcommittee. I don't think we've had any meet. I know we haven't had any meetings for that. That is gonna be coming soon in the pipeline. Um, yeah, Jerry, I can just speak to that quickly. Uh, this is just Commissioner Meyer. Um, we're meeting yes. this one. We're meeting this Wednesday afternoon, so we'll have meaningful updates next month. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Meyer. I appreciate it. And next would be the Park Enhancements Subcommittee. Mm -hmm. 
And that uh, that committee, I've not um, scheduled that meeting yet, so they've not met yet. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much for that, Yvonne. Appreciate it. And we're going to move on to the pickleball. Michael, are you available for the pickleball? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, just to give everyone a heads up, um, we're currently in the midst of things as we plan uh, in looking forward to 2023 and 2024 for court expansion over at Duluth. Um, collectively, the group has been providing um, myself and Yvonne with feedback with regard to certain fine tuning or certain changes we made uh, to court operations. And when I say that, I'm more or less referencing um, signage. Um, and initially with group discussion, we had gone with um, three signs. Uh, it was requested that we reduce that down to one sign for instructional purposes for people coming uh, to use the site to play pickleball. We were to have uh, a recent meeting with Ad Hoc for further um, preparations um, for 23 and 24. Um, and there were just some schedule issues. So we will reschedule and get right on that project because we realize that time is of the essence with that. And the sooner we can get um, the ball rolling on that, um, the better that will be. I also just want to reference, I know recently there was a, a water main break issue um, over at Jamuth, and I just want to extend my compliments um, with regard to city management for getting that problem rectified quickly. It was brought to my attention, um, as it was to others in you know city government, uh, of this event's occurrence, and uh, really very fast the problem was resolved, and the people were back on the courts. But um, really, I have to say my compliments to the group on the ad hoc committee, very good esprit de corps, very good uh, insights and ideas and looking forward. And I think they're very excited, the group uh, in planning for uh, the expansion over at Demuth. So um, that is my report. Awesome, thank you, Michael. Any questions for Michael? All right, with that being said, I think that's all our ad hoc meetings. We're gonna move on to commissioner comments, commissioner updates. Um, I'm just gonna go down the list from what we have here. I'm gonna start with myself. Um, let me give first and foremost, before I get into any business, I wanna give a huge, huge, huge shout out to the Gay Men Softball League. Thank you so much for all the donations, dedication, helping out our community, helping out the kids, putting on the uh, Breakfast with Santa. It's really, they worked seamlessly with us. It, it's really a huge shout out to them. They put so much time and effort into it. It means a lot. So for me, Bob, my heart, uh, well done, gentlemen, and thank you very, very much. That's, that's truthfully number one. So from there, I got some questions I'd like to uh, move up for us. I'd like to start working on. I know we have our new Lexan screen at the swim center, which is awesome. It only it seems like that screen only gets used when we have tournaments. Is there any way of us in the future maybe getting a cover for that screen? Maybe making a you know some kind of exterior cloth cover or something that can go on on the screen to cover it from the sun during the summer. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, we're always constantly looking at ways to promote park and recreation with our city. I would absolutely love to wrap our vans. We have three or four vans that go around to all these schools or all over the city all the time, picking up our kids, shuttling back and forth. That's a, that would be a rolling billboard for us. I almost think that's a no brainer for the city for us to wrap our park and recreation vans. I would love to see that. And finally, the last thing I really like to do is because we have so many events where people are in person now, such as the Santa and other events, it'd be great to get some name tags for people. It really would. It'd be awesome to have name tags besides the shirts, but name tags as well. I think that goes for staff and even commissioners if they would like, but I'd really love to see name tags too uh, coming along. Other than that, you know, I'd just like to say thank you to all the commissioners for all the hard work. We've had a rough uh, couple of years with COVID. We're coming out of it. And I think we hit the ground running and we're doing very, very well here. We have a lot of events going on. Everything's moving very seamlessly. Our Demuth Center is running like no other. I've never seen that center run so smooth. It works really well. Our pavilion is running seamlessly. And James O'Jesse, 
that place is just phenomenal as well. So we've got some really good facilities moving and going on. I just want to help support our community and our people. And I really think, like I said, one of the big things is us getting our name and our brand out there. If we can get more visible, that would be awesome. And I think the first thing would be to, to get our vans wrapped up. So with that being said, that's all I have to say for my comments, other than, you know what, also thank you to the city council and all the previous commissioners for all the hard work on getting the bathrooms into the park. People don't realize how hard that is. It took years and years. So thank you for getting the bathrooms in the park. And with that, I'm going to move on to uh, Mr. Caldonado. Uh, hey, I just want to wish everybody happy holidays. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is, Jerry, kudos to you, man. Um, you, you've done so much and your heart is in the right place. You're the right man for this job or for, for the commission. So I personally want to thank you for that because I, I see everything you do. And uh, great job and really good ideas too. Those, those uh, wrapping the vans, getting some name tags out, just those two little things. I don't know what the van, I can help with that. I know somebody who can do some wrapping and uh, maybe there's some kind of donation or something, but great ideas, great job in what you do. You're a good leader. And um, thanks for the other commissioners uh, that's been with us for a while and you guys are hanging in with us. And I look forward to where we can meet and shake hands and, and look at each other in the face, you know, cause this Zoom stuff for me, hmm, I don't really care for it, but that's the way it is. But um, I'm glad to be a part of it. And uh, again, happy holidays and go love somebody. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Thank you, Johnny. Dieter, you got anything, sir? Yeah, just want to say uh, happy holidays to everyone. And, uh, you know, all the hard work the commission's doing. Um, to Jerry as well, being a chair, we've uh, got some things accomplished. Um, the restrooms as well and all the parks, uh, those are definitely needed. So um, let's just uh, keep up the good work and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you, sir. Ms. Diaz, do you have anything, ma'am? Hi, yes, I do. First of all, Jerry, thanks for your leadership and all your efforts and energy. Um, and on, um, some, I attended some of these fantastic um, holiday celebrations at the different locations and um, mm -hmm. just super awesome to see families and kids having a good time um, and enjoying mm -hmm. it. Uh, the restrooms in James O. Jesse, I was not able to attend because that was kind of like a last minute announcement and I, I'm working at a school during the day. So I was kind of disappointed because boy, we waited so, so long. How many years, as long as I've been on this and then many years before then just as a resident of the uh, city in that area. So um, super happy to see those restrooms open. While I was attending the breakfast with Santa mm -hmm. the Leisure Center and I used the women's restroom there and I thought, oh, this is our next project in the building. <laughs> we need to get some updates. We, we can't rest, we need to keep pushing it. Um, you know, there's just so much work to be done and i um, super excited with all the things we've got coming up, but um, I hope everybody does take a few minutes to, just a few minutes only though, to rest and relax and have a happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Mr. Finland. Yes, sir. I do have some comments. Uh, first of all, I just want to um, echo what the other commissioners uh, shared with you as far as my um, compliments and my encomiums uh, to you, Jerry. Uh, do an incredible job as, uh, as chairman and as uh, leader for this committee. Um, and anytime I've had uh, an issue, a problem, a question, uh, I've reached out to you. You've been a tremendous help. And I, my hat's off also to the other um, commission members. I know how hard everyone's working on different projects and different initiatives. I also wanna extend my thanks to Yvonne who hit the ground running uh, earlier this year and has done a phenomenal job and is also just like you, Jerry, very accessible and always happy to help and to answer questions um, as the organization grows and expands and moves forward. So thank you to everyone. Happy holidays, enjoy. And I look forward to um, our initiatives and events as they unfold for 2023. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Finley. Mrs. Myers. 
Thank you. Um, I'll keep it brief. I just echo the sentiments that everyone else has already put on the record. Um, I really appreciate Yvonne bringing us some much needed structure and some momentum and reviving the forward uh, motion back into the committee, um, which really matches with Jerry's sort of zest for getting things done. So you guys are a great uh, compliment to one another. So we'll just keep going in 2023, it'll be great. So thank you to everybody. Ms. Meyer, Mr. Moralia. Happy holidays, everybody. Um, I would also like to echo the kudos to Chairman Alcorn. Jerry, you seriously are everywhere. So you are making us visible. So the the ideas that you have about wrapping the van and all of that stuff totally fits in with who you are and what your vision is for this department. So I, I, I just can't believe that you're able to be at all these things. Um, but I'm really thankful that you are. Um, also, Yvonne, any question that I've ever had, I don't think I ever wait more than, I mean, it's probably not even a day, but like you've been extremely accessible, really helpful. I feel like you hit the ground running here and I'm excited that there's forward motion. I mean, the dog park community seems, I'm going to put it in air quotes, happy. Um, but, you know, like there is definitely progress and that is exciting to see. Happy holidays, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I know Mr. Spellman's not here. Uh, one last thing I just wanted to say is happy holidays to everybody. I didn't say that from the bottom of my heart, truly from my family to yours, happy holidays. Hope everybody is uh, blessed and stays warm this holiday. With that being said, is do I have a motion to close? Is there any last burning desires? I think we've got them all out. Is there a motion to close? Motion. Thank you, Michael. Mr. Finland, motion. Can I get a second? Hi, man. Second. Mr. Coronado. Mr. Caldonado. Thank you, Johnny. With that being said, I'd like to wrap up the tw last meeting of 2022, December 17th, December, sorry, 19th, Park and Recreation Commission meeting at 6.30 tonight. So thank you, everybody. Hope everybody stays safe and has a blessed holiday. And once again, thank you, everybody, for all the support and help. We're trying to move this forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Next everybody. Week, January 23rd. Bye, Susie Q. Bye. <laughs> Take care, you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, -bye. Bye Jody. Have a good one, everybody. Better, Jerry. <laughs> Thank care. you, as always. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. Great job, Yvonne. Thank you. All right. Happy holidays. Okay. Goodbye.